Hi, and welcome to the Augusta Video Sew Along. I'm Jen, the owner and founder of Grainline Studio Patterns, and in this series, I'll be walking you step-by-step -step through the process of sewing up our brand new Augusta shirt and dress pattern. I love this pattern because it's so easy to wear, but it looks put together thanks to the statement collar. I keep reaching for comfortable clothes during this social distancing period, but after a while, constant yoga pants and tees really start to get me down. The Augusta is a perfect compromise. It's not restricting, but looks put together, so I feel like I'm going to work even though I'm just going upstairs to my office. I hope that you also find that the Augusta fills a hole in your wardrobe and you get a lot of wear out of it. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Augusta pattern, I want to start by going over the pattern details. Simply put, the Augusta is a slightly oversized shirt and dress with an asymmetrical collar. It's fitted through the shoulders, which anchors the silhouette on the body, then falls into a cocoon shape below the bust. The asymmetrical collar is both polished and I think it's really fun to sew. The short and long sleeves are interchangeable with the garment length and the hems are finished with a mitered corner. The two sleeve options are interchangeable between the dress and top versions and that gives you flexibility depending on the seasons and your personal layering preferences. The first thing you'll need for this sew along is the Augusta pattern. It's available in our shop, which I'll link in the video description below, along with the links to the rest of the tools and supplies mentioned in this section. We offer the Augusta in both a paper and PDF format, as well as in both of our size ranges, so you can choose the pattern type and the size that's right for you. After the pattern, you're going to need fabric and fusible interfacing. Check the yardage requirements on the pattern envelope to see how much you'll need. We'll talk more about selecting these two items in a minute. As far as thread, I like to use a high quality 100% polyester thread, like the ones available from Mettler or Guterman. No matter what fabric I'm using, I use poly thread. It won't shrink after you've washed your garment, so you won't have to deal with any surprises the first time you wash it, and it's also very strong. A good rule of thumb to remember with sewing is for garments, you want your thread to be stronger than your fabric. That way, you don't pop any seams while you're wearing your handmade garments out. A small, repairable tear at the side seam won't ruin your day, but your side seam popping while you're out definitely will. Let's now talk about the tools you'll need to complete your Augusta. Pretty much any pins you have laying around are going to work just fine as long as they're an appropriate size for your fabric. I'll be using these glass head pins on my linen version. Since this shirt is meant for wovens, a universal needle will be fine. Match the size of the needle with the fabric you're using. Thinner needles for finer fabrics and thicker for less fine or more loosely woven fabrics. I love my quarter inch foot, which Bernina calls the patchwork foot because of the accuracy it provides, but I recommend using whatever you're used to for the bulk of this project. You may also find an edge stitching foot helpful. They have a guide down the center of the foot that aligns with the edge of your fabric and helps you stitch a consistent distance from your edge. If you've watched any of my videos up to this point, you know that I'm not much of a rotary person, um, but these are the scissors that I find most useful for almost every project I make. My Ginger bend handled shears, I use these to cut out my fabric, snip, clip, and more. I use embroidery scissors to grade my seam allowances. You can alternately use duckbill scissors, but I personally find them a bit large and awkward for my small hands. But again, whatever works for you is what's best. Thread snips live next to each of my machines at all times. I could not sew without them. As far as rulers, you'll need a tape measure to take your measurements, as well as lay out your pattern pieces for cutting. Having an 18 inch gridded ruler handy is often helpful when laying out your pattern pieces, and it also can help to square up things as you sew. You may also want a seam gauge for pressing up your hems and other small measurements. You'll need a marking tool of some kind to trace your pattern onto the fabric. I like to use a bone chalk pencil it has a fine lead that comes in multiple colors and it's washable. You can also use something like a clover choco liner, but I just keep in mind that the colored chalk on these is not washable. So if you're using a color other than white and it's visible, it may not come out in the wash. 
A lot of people like friction pens, and those do work great for anything that's either cut off or trapped in the seam allowance. But do keep in mind that due to the way the ink works, the lines will come back in cold weather. So only use that in places that won't show on your finished garment. I use a bone folder to turn my collar points. Whatever you usually use should be fine, but just keep in mind that anything too sharp can poke through your fabric, and that's a pretty difficult thing to fix. You'll also need an iron and an ironing board. My iron is kind of an odd story. It's a Philips iron that I ordered off of Amazon UK. I am in the US for those of you who are not familiar. And I ordered it based on a recommendation from my mom's quilt guild after I was tired of my Rowentas perpetually leaking. This is not an ad, I'm not sponsored at all. I just love this iron. And a lot of you have asked in previous videos what kind of iron I'm using. Um, anyway, I love this iron and it's been working perfectly for the last five years, but I do need to use an adapter with it in the US. So if you're considering buying one of these, check with an electrician to make sure that your circuit can handle it. As far as an ironing board, any board you have will be just great. You simply just need something to press on. I also like to have a ham and sleeve roll handy for pressing curved bits and sleeves. If you don't have these already, they'll really up your sewing game, so I highly recommend getting a set. All right, so now we're gonna talk about recommended fabrics. And I find this easiest to do if I show you the garments made up in the type of fabric that we recommend, so you can get an idea of how the fabric works when sewn up into the garment, rather than looking at something online and wondering how it will drape, or even holding up um, a cut section of fabric. It's hard to imagine if you don't see it. So on the back of the pattern envelope here, it says suggested fabrics, and we have light to medium weight woven fabrics such as cotton, linen, chambray, rayon, etc. So I'm gonna show you a few of those now. So let's start with the Augusta that I'm wearing. This one is made out of a lightweight woven linen. It's not super shifty, but it does have great drape. Um, you can see it holds the shape of the collar really well. Linen presses really nicely which I find advantageous for the collar. If you have something that doesn't hold a press, um, it's gonna be hard to make a crisp collar with it without top stitching. And you'll notice there is no top stitching on this shirt. So lightweight linen is a great option. This is a little heavier than handkerchief linen, um, but you could use handkerchief linen as well. So next, while we're on the linen topic, this is a medium weight sand washed linen. Um, it is a little heavier than what I'm wearing and it has a really great texture. It's super soft and you can see since it's linen, it holds a press really well. It's drapey, it's easy to wear. If you're into linen, you don't mind these wrinkles. I find them really beautiful. I like the way they catch the light. Um, but if you're not into that, then maybe linen's not for you. But this is the purple version that our model is wearing. So you can see it on a human on our website. And I personally love this fabric. This blue version is also a washed linen. It's a little thinner than the other without quite as much texture, um, but I think it works really well. It's easy to wear again and holds a really nice press. And you can see the drape is nice. It really, it falls beautifully for the cocoon shape. And you can see this on our model Mia on our website. Now one last linen, um, this is a medium weight woven linen. It's a little heavier um, than the washed and it's a little crisper. So you can see it has a super nice press. It does have a little more body than the washed linen and then the one I'm wearing, but I think it's a really nice option if you want something a little thicker. Tiffany is wearing this on our website as well. You can see all of these, I believe, on our website. So this is actually my favorite Augusta that we have. Tiffany's wearing it on our website. It is a linen viscose blend and it has a tiny bit of crinkle texture and I just think it falls so beautifully and you can see just how easy that moves. But the linen still holds a really nice press so you get a really beautiful collar. The cuffs are nice and sharp. I love this fabric. I wish I had bought more for myself. It's one of my now life's great regrets. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so if you can find um, a linen viscose blend, those are really, really nice. Now this one here, Mia wears on our website, it is a viscose twill. So it has a twill texture, 
It's super soft. It's not thin, but it's also thicker than most um, viscose or rayon, and it holds a really nice press. I really like the sheen of this. The drape is amazing. Um, and I don't think that viscose twill is that hard to work with personally. Um, so if you have done a collar before, this is a solid option for you. If not, I would maybe stick with linen or cotton the first time, just because it is a little bit of like tricky cutting into things here. Um, so keep that in mind. Now this is 100% uh, rayon. You has a lot more drape than even the rayon twill. Um, or the viscose twill, and you can see it does hold the collar pretty well, and it's very, very drapey. So this is another option. I would stay away from going too thin with your rayon. Um, it can get a little hard, again, to cut in and do the placket here. If it's too thin, if you're very well versed and you're an advanced sewer, you go for it, but just keep that in mind. Now this is another fabric that I wish I had bought enough of for myself. This is a cotton woven fabric. Um, there's a lot of these beautiful woven prints available online and they have a really good drape. They, I think, work really well with the style. Press really nice. And the bonus is they're super easy to sew. And unlike a lot of cottons that are easy to sew, like quilting cotton, for example, a lot of times that really stands away from your body. And with a silhouette like this, I find it more comfortable if it falls, it has a nice drape. And this is the best of both worlds because it has a great drape and it's super easy to sew. So keep that in mind. And finally, here we have a cotton chambray. This one weirdly did not press super well. Um, <laughs> So I would highly recommend doing a press test. If this was my own, this was a sample we made when we were testing the pattern, I would have top stitched this because I don't feel like it's quite sharp enough for my personal taste. But I really like the overall look of this. It's a little more casual, kind of references a work shirt. And I think it's really fun. The drape is nice and it's a solid option for you. Now, a few fabrics we haven't talked about, but I'm really excited to try out, um, are some wool suiting fabrics. I've made the Hadley in a few wool suitings, and I really love them. I wear them all the time. I also made a Faro in a wool suiting, so I'm really excited to see how that would work out for winter with the Augusta. So that won't be during the sew along, but something to think about. I think it could be really, really cute. Now for the sew along, I'll be using these two Japanese print linens for my two samples. We'll be making a long sleeve one and a short sleeve one. And this way you can easily see there's a right and a wrong side. So you'll be able to follow along really well. And I'm super excited about introducing these prints into my wardrobe. Um, the Augusta works really well with a print. You can go through the hashtag on Instagram to see a few more prints. Um, people have done some really, really cute stuff that I personally wouldn't have thought of. And that's really why I love seeing what you all make. So that is that for fabric. Now I also wanna talk about interfacing really quick. The pattern does require interfacing for the collar pieces and you're gonna to wanna to look for a woven fusible interfacing. So no bonded interfacing. If it looks like it could go in a bag, say no. It's going to be stiff. It's not gonna have a grain line. It's going to make the collar bulky. Even the really thin bonded interfacing is not thin enough for garments. So look for something woven. Um, if you can't find woven fusible interfacing, you could do a trico or a knit. That's perfectly acceptable. And you wanna look for something that's similar in weight. So if you have a super lightweight fabric, you're gonna to wanna to get a super lightweight interfacing because you don't want the interfacing to take over the structure of the fabric. You want to enhance the structure of the fabric. So keep that in mind as you shop for interfacing. All right, so that is it for day one of the Augusta Video Sew Along. I hope you found the information useful and that you're just as excited as I am to add an Augusta to your wardrobe. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible.
our next lesson will focus on choosing a size and basic pattern adjustments. So make sure you have your fabric ordered. We'll have two lessons on pattern adjustments for your fabric to arrive before we start cutting. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you back here next time. Bye.